Good evening.
But God, we realize that we are powerless within ourselves. But God, we ask you to lead us and to guide us. Direct this meeting in such a way, oh God, that you will be pleased. Place us on one accord. God, unify our thoughts that we may move prints for your forward. And God, we pray, oh God, that we conduct ourselves in such a way that you will be glorified. God, we thank you for the citizens that are present. We thank you for the one that desires to be here but cannot. God, we take this lead and we place it in your hands. Do what you want to do, and God will be satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Chat Leroy Brown. I'm sorry. That's you? Yeah. Okay. Please move to the podium, state your name and address. You have up to five minutes. <laughs> the building was already there. Um, she wanted to sell out. She was retiring. Nobody wanted to buy. Seafood is my favorite food. I didn't want to have to go to Rock and Mountain and buy my seafood. So instead of closing it down, I invested in it. If there's a building over here, I certainly would have bought that as well. But there's not a building available at this time. But in the future, it will be. Okay? You would have you would have some customers for I hear a lot of people sit there. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Durham, you, you speaking now? No, no. I, yeah, I'm, I'm later on the agenda, sir. Okay. Thank I, you. I saw your name on this thing. I see now. Okay. Right. I guess that's your name. You sign in? Yes, sir, I did. We want to make sure that you know we're, you're here. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much. Well, I was asked to sign in, so I signed in. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Ms. Thomas? Done correctly the first time, 
we pay for everything, so we won't have this issue anymore. And my last and final question, what's going on with the bank? Well, they're working on the floodgates now. The dike is on hold until the Army Corps of Engineers come back and tell us which decision they have made. It looks as though they're not going to uh, do anything with the dike. It may be a diversion channel, which drives the water around Princeville, or a reservoir. Those are the three things that they're looking at now. They upgrade the dike, reservoir, or diversion channel. They told us at our last meeting about three, month, three to four months ago that normally it would take three years, but because of we of who we are, it could take it back to a year and a half. However, we got another follow-up email saying the Assistant Secretary of the Army has not given them the go ahead to start yet. Why it's taking so long, I have no idea. Uh, it seems as though everybody's on our side. I mean, the federal government, state government, local government, everybody's saying we need to get it done. But Army Corps of Engineers has not moved yet. So with that being said, Mayor, the forward edge the left hand side before you go across the bridge, can you give a little reference to that? That is the floodgate, one of the four floodgates. They're working on four floodgates, upgrading those now. Uh, we have a total of 12, if I'm not mistaken. So these are the four that are in worse condition. The other eight. They are workable. No issues with them at this particular time. So that will assist us in keeping the floodwaters out, but nothing's going to keep it out until we address the levee, until we address the dike. And that's what we're pushing, pushing so hard for right now. We're spending a lot of money in the town of Pressville, and we certainly don't want that money to be wasted. So that's why we're pushing the Army Corps of Engineers to come on and see what they're going to do. Version channel, uh, reservoir, or upgraded dock. Ms. Wilkins? Yes, sir. I would ask to sign in too, but I could ask for two hours. Okay. Uh, they have to be able to do that. 
And I think they may have just put the key in the wrong area. And what has happened is that the elevator flooring has gone down and the top has gone down. I think it's nothing that is major. I think it's a simple thing of having the elevated people come and refigurating uh, the key to where it will go back in place. Uh, we have made initial contact with them to come and do it, but I think that's what happens. But I do agree with Ms. Wilkins, uh, and that was my summation too after today, that it would be nice for someone to be able if a person is going to rent it from six to nine Amen. or whatever time, uh, somebody come there at least 15 or 20 minutes before they leave and to make sure that everything is in place and everything is locked up. Ms. Taylor, are you saying at this time you're on the inside of the building at the elevator? You open the elevator, you look down, there's nothing there. You just no, the floor is there. The floor has been dropped lower than when you walk in. It's, it's, it's probably about nine to ten inches from being low. Yeah. So when you step on the elevator, you got to step down. You have to step down instead of just walking in on the floor mm -hmm. itself. And then they can let the security up until the fixed from the inside. Well, we can't open or close the door because the, right. the key, we don't have any power. Nobody can get from outside, nobody can get into it because of the door upstairs being open. That's the initial way of us keeping people from outside walking in at ground level and operating the elevator. So oh, it's you, safe. Are you speaking to security that no one can go in and then this already brought down? Exactly. Uh, no, we have. Uh, we'll I, did, care of I did put up posters okay. today to let people know that the elevator is uh, out of operation. Both. Uh, ground level and upstairs. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Wilkins, for the recognizing our town manager. I, I concur with everything that you said. We get Toby stage, right? <laughs> Ms. Perkins? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Kelly Perkins, 123 Neville Street. Um, Ms. Mayor, uh, I thought I heard you say that the project work that they're doing, they're working on the wall and sewer. Mm -hmm. Are they replacing the water lines? They are. Water and sewer. Okay. Um, and all over town? All over town. Okay. Could that be why my water is not running at all? Stand pace. Um, I have to check on that. Let me check. No, please. It shouldn't be. I don't have any issue with my water. Anybody have any issues with that water? You got issues with the sewer? Find the sewer. Find the sewer? Yeah, I found the sewer. Okay. Not the page. So we'll check on that. Okay. Um, I also heard you saying that they're going to, they're putting on four gates. Put four, four gates. They're going to put on four gates. They're repairing four gates. They're repairing four gates. Yes. I thought y'all had the money to replace gates. Replace if necessary, uh, but the money that was there was just for the repair, mm -hmm. uh, and it was enough for four. Matter of fact, it was number three, then they found additional funding for the fourth. Okay, so you just repaired them, I thought. And uh, I thought earlier y'all had said that you were replacing. Okay. Uh, the, the ordinance that y'all have, the 22 23 project ordinance uh, that y'all have in the package, uh, is that AI or uh -huh. money? Which one was that? <clears throat> Is uh, 2223 Project Ordinance Amendment Number Two? That's uh, ARPA funding. Mm -hmm. That's ARPA funding. Okay. Yeah. Well, is that money that you all have in hand? Yes. 
Uh, I'm, I'm reading through it, and it says it's talking about investing in water sewer, broadband infrastructure, uh, wastewater, stormwater infrastructure, and I'm back at the end of the ditches. Uh, the ditches are very, very important in the town of Franceville, and it seems like the town will just do me a favor. Uh, the mayor told me that it was four hundred thousand dollars paying out the ditch. Now we've had the ditches paying out for a little anyway, close to four hundred thousand dollars. So I would like for you all to get really just let me know if it's four hundred thousand dollars. It's out there. There's a lot of money for infrastructure and water out there. Uh, I know that the town has a few problems with grants right now, but that the money's out there. But this money is six hundred and thirteen thousand dollars. Is that what you all have on hand? That's what we were initially our, we were initially given, right? In twenty twenty one. Right now I think we have four about four hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars. Okay, so and that could be used to clean up the ditches, make it look clean, or make it look so. Well, that's actually not a decision I would make, just the board and the commissioners either. That's well, what I'm, I'm saying. Is that money that could be used? It, it is money that could be used. Um, okay. But I would also caution that they would need to take uh, evaluation of how far those dollars can go. If they can do other things, three or four, five other things. Well, they tell me, sir, you don't live here. I mm -hmm. live here. I've been yeah. here for 62 years. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more important in this town and keeping the water free to flow mm -hmm. when hurricanes, uh, awesome. thunderstorms, uh, just just hard rain uh, come. I see they fix, they work on beach this street and they were supposed to fix where the water stood all the time. Well, it's still saying that we have major water. But my thing is, and I, I'm going from a standpoint of when Hurricane Floyd came through, there was so much rain from Hurricane Floyd coming, leaving, coming back, that there was nowhere for the water to go but up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the ditches were in a mess. So they couldn't hold the water, and they were stopped up, and water wouldn't flow. Mm -hmm. So that's why we had such so much water that was coming in, the major water coming in off of. <clears throat> Of 33. And so, but my thing is, yes, there are a lot of things that need to be done in Princeville, but to me, and I've been flooded twice, I had to leave and lost everything twice. Mm -hmm. To me, the ditches are a major part of getting Princeville back to where it's supposed to be. Um, yes, ma'am. That's and, me. And, and let me say on behalf of the administration, that we will push whatever agenda we are given from the board and the commissioners. Okay, so uh, I'm speaking to the board. Uh, some of you here, the Hurricane Floyd came through. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Fowler over there, Mr. Commissioner Allen, and Mr. Deputy over there, he knows. And uh, Commissioner Brown, she knows they had to run for the border. <laughs> Commissioner. State, he knows that we had to run for the border. And the very place that they're working on down by the railroad track right now, we had they were down that same bag and trying to keep the water out of the mm -hmm. But I understand there are a lot of problems. I understand that there are a lot of things that need to be done in Fredville. And I'm hoping that uh, I wasn't able to be here for you all. We all had the priority meeting of things that need to be done. And I'm happy that. I don't know what y'all gonna do about the museum. It's been sitting there. Uh, I don't know what you're gonna do about that stack of dirt over there by the park that was supposed to be around the market. But all I wanna do, I wanna see something finish mm -hmm. in Princeville. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time, a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I just wanna see something finish, and I don't want the next hurricane to send us packing. Again, mm -hmm. I appreciate whatever y'all do. And if I can get some help to give y'all some old folks information, I'm yeah. going to do that too. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. yeah.
Mr. Jackson, can you share a little bit on the insight for the museum, where we are on that? Yes. Uh, actually, there were two projects that were held up. The first project was the museum, and the second project was our parking lot. Uh, the reason why those were held up is that we have to go back and get the documentation that shows us what was approved with you guys, because you were approved only to get it back to where it was. So when we put out the RFP, <coughs> we need to make sure we're putting out the RFP with the specs that you were given that you were to do. Because it doesn't do any good to put an RFP out saying you want all this stuff if you're not going to fund it. So we, our plan is to have both RFPs <coughs> issued next week, and hopefully that we can get our bids in by the end of September, and hopefully we can have work starting in October. Thank you, Mr. Jack. That um, this parking kind of understand the process. Appreciate it. Mr. Williams. Good evening. Good evening. My name is John Williams. I live at one point on the other name of Southern Church. Uh, I've been brief, uh, what I'm going to say. Uh, I've been keeping close watch at Southern Terrace and also in Christville, but mostly I can speak for Southern Terrace with where I live. Uh, I spoke to, uh, I don't know if anybody from the county is here tonight or not, uh, but uh, it was on my street web lane this morning, uh, taking out the mill stations and whatnot in, in the uh, manhole. And uh, I like to say to the citizens of Southern Terrace, uh, I know the date he told me, but I'm going to just word it like this. They said that all the unpaid streets in Southern Terrace are uh, being affected and paid them before this week out for the work that they've done in Southern Terrace. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Stassi? Yeah. I'll be brief. They didn't come to see anything, but um, it was Stassi. But when I saw uh, my former town manager on um, I just had to say something. Uh, I love when I see brothers um, um, using their expertise. And um, I think, you know, you got some good consultants here. And then um, I ain't got to say anything about Mr. Patterson. We've been on him for years since he goes back in the 80s and 90s. So it's just good to see the brothers. And I haven't seen, uh, I don't know much about the manager, but I have a very number of good things about him. So I see three brothers here. And I'm going to hold y'all account. I'm going to hold y'all account. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Hearing none, we've got a motion to approve the agenda as written. So the proper moving second that we approve the agenda as written on the question. All in favor, you vote and sign aye. Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Proper moved and second that we approve the consent agenda. Are there questions? All in favor, you vote and sign aye. Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Next, we have presentations. Crestfield Youth Academy Summer 2024 report by the Crestfield Youth Academy Director, Mr. Murphy. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioner, Town Leadership, and Community of Crestfield. My name is Chris Murphy. This summer I had the amazing privilege to serve as the Crestfield Youth Academy Director. Uh, Crestfield Youth Academy started on June 24 and concluded on August 12th. Uh, this eight week summer program was a free program. Uh, specifically, specifically for the students here in Kirksville, North Carolina. Our program broke this summer was to expose students to a diverse range of opportunities. Um, myself as a director, my instructional teacher, Ms. Tammy Worcester, and my program specialist, Mr. Jaquavis Williams, who is a freshman at A&T. Um, if you guys don't know Mr. Jaquavis Williams, I hope that you get to know him. He's a remarkable 18-year-old young man who I can honestly say I could not have done this program without him. Um, so he is a he is part of the first bill. I think he's going to do great things. 
here in the near future. Um, we had three junior mentors, and their primary role was to supervise kids, um, to serve as a mentor, and to do different things that Mr. Williams or Ms. Warsaw asked them to do. We had two junior mentor assistants, and then we had two additional staff do a partnership with OIC and Rocky Mount. Um, I did do a staff survey with all of my staff just to get some feedback from them, um, as this was my first year as the director. Um, and I'm glad to report that all my staff said that if they had an opportunity to return that summer, that they wanted. So that's always good to hear. Um, our average daily attendance was around 15 students. I will say we started off with 25. Um, however, just due to Ashcombe County Public Schools and different organizations at my summer school, different things that kids were required to go to, our ADM kind of uh, went down from 25 to 15. Nevertheless, we still had a good summer. Um, we did take some field trips. We went to Kingston Board Park. We took our staff to North Carolina Central University. We went to the North Carolina Legislative Village in Raleigh, in Raleigh, excuse me, the North Carolina Aquarium, the North Carolina Museum of Science. Um, we visited the pool when the weather allowed us to. Uh, they bring a lot this summer. Um, and we also visited the movies. Um, we believe that just not just little kids, not just instructional resources, but also opportunities that they may not be afforded to. Um, and this morning was our round was very important to us. Our budget, we started off with five thousand um, dollars. We spent about a thousand dollars on food, five hundred on supplies, two thousand dollars on field trips, five hundred on staff lunch and doing field trips, and about fourteen hundred at the end of the camp celebration. We should have a game truck, some home truck and lunch, and staff appreciation food of the summer and staff of the summer. Our feedback from our parents, we received our email from parents including they wanted to spend some hours for our camp hours this summer was Monday to Thursday from 9 to 3.30. Um, and then our Fridays were mm -hmm. uh, devoted for our staff development, which we took them on college stores, had state employees coming in to come in to talk to them about financial literacy, just different things to prepare them for adulthood. Um, parents also said they would like to see things year, year round, um, so we are going to be working on that as well, so just make sure we continue to support our parents. Our plans for improvement next summer. Um, we are giving the town hall back to town leadership, and we hope to be back, or we hope to be at Heritage Park next summer, so the kids have a more uh, large space, uh, uh, big kids, I'll say. Uh, staffing, we want to make sure that next year we have staff uh, that are dedicated, not saying that we do not, but dedicated to the vision that we are trying to uphold when it comes to Prince William Academy. Um, and transportation, uh, Mr. Jackson has promised that we're going to do the van. So we won't have to use the senior citizen van um, so they continue to do their trips and we can continue to as long as our students have different opportunities. I would just like to say in closing thank you to Mr. Jackson Ms. Carter for entrusting me to lead this program. Um, I believe the kids had an amazing summer. Um, Mayor, thank you for allowing us to use your two vans. Um, and to all the commissioners for your support, I believe that if you continue to support to the youth at Clearsfield, you'll see a thriving community. Again, thank you and I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. I would, yeah, I would, I would just like to say uh, that we really uh, appreciate Mr. Murphy. He did an outstanding job with the youth this year. Uh, not only is he a great mentor, but he is someone that uh, really cares about the kids and getting to that next level. So we are extremely grateful to you. We thank you for all of your work. Uh, most of your work was done while you weren't even on the clock. So we understand that and we appreciate you. And the kids are better now than they were when they came. So thank you. He's getting some more experience with children starting on Monday, right? Yes, sir. Monday. Is that Baskerville Elementary? Uh, that's where I used to be the assistant principal. So I'll be with there with them on Monday morning just to welcome the students there. And we certainly hope next year we can work out something with the French Youth Academy to prepare them with YouTube to get them ready for working for the town of Prince Yeah, you too. You really felt it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be see it trying to song on the other. Okay, next we have the Prince Heritage Trail by Freedom Four co founder, CEO, my brother Dickens. Everybody, can you all hear me? Pretty good? Hello. Yes. All right, perfect. Hi, everybody. I'm sorry I couldn't be there. Um, supposed to be on vacation, but clearly I'm still, I'm still working. But I wanted to make sure that 
uh, I had a chance to answer any questions um, that you all have about the resolution that you have in your package. Um, and also tell you a little bit more in, in detail about uh, what this grant is and kind of potentially what it could do, what we're hoping uh, that it will do for, for Prince Hill and also our surrounding areas. Um, and so um, I know some of our commissioners had an opportunity to come to our community engagement and uh, meetings in June and July. Um, and so this grant is really a first step of one of the things that we talked about uh, in those meetings, which is green space. Um, and, and I'll tell you a little bit more about why green space is important, um, especially for a place like Princeville. Um, so this project will develop additional trails um, and extend the existing trail to create a more cohesive network that promotes outdoor recreation, community health, and economic development. And so we have a goal um, to develop sustainable and multi-use trails that enhance public access to outdoor recreation while still preserving North Carolina's cultural heritage, which we know Princeville is a very historic place. Um, so the trail expansion will also attract tourists and outdoor enthusiasts, stimulating the local stimulating local businesses and supporting both Princeville and Tarboro economic growth. Um, and so I heard earlier, you know, I, I came in a little bit later, but definitely we need to be looking at bringing more businesses in Princeville and having these trails to be able to connect uh, key places within our community. Uh, it, it helps help keep us active. It helps keep, um, you know, not everybody has transportation, and so as we're working on transportation and inaccessibility issues, uh, having a safe trail and a trail system uh, will, will help us uh, also stay healthy. Uh, we are number one in health, in terms of low ranking in health in out of all 100 counties. Um, that's pretty that's pretty high, um, and so some of the justifications that we have is to support. Uh, again, outdoor recreation and ways that we can keep our community up and moving, but also how do we leverage where we are geographically as a community as well. So this project is going to provide key connectivity to daily destinations uh, to improve this access trail and fill the gap that we currently have. Right now we have two two trails in Princeville. We have at the two mile trail that's on top of the levee, and then we have the trail coming from um, the NC State and North Carolina Coastal Dynamic Lab did coming from the elementary school behind Asbury Park um, back to the museum. Um, and so we're looking to really take this and extend this into the residential areas, uh, creating more parks and green space for our communities. Um, and everything like that. But also we understand that it is right there close to Tarboro. Um, and so loose trails connect to Tarboro can really uh, give our community more access to a variety of amenities that are right downtown Tarboro, which is right across the bridge as well. Um, the other thing that we're really looking to do is, is um, really looking to build upon our economic development opportunities in ways that we don't traditionally think about or have not traditionally thought about within our community. Uh, we talk about things like bike trail, paddle boat, paddle boat trails, so on and so forth. Uh, when we talked about this in our meeting, a lot of us are like, I don't know, I'm not riding a bike or, or I'm not getting on a paddle trail or you know, I'm not getting in that water, so on and so forth. But however, outdoor recreation is a multi-billion dollar industry um, that we should be tapping into. Uh, Tarbo is looking to tap into it and we should be simultaneously looking to do the same thing. Um, so as a hub, we, we see this as a hub for outdoor recreation and historical education. And we think this trail will bring residents together for shared experiences fostering a stronger sense of community pride. Uh, economically, the extended trail will benefit both Tarboro and Princeville by attracting visitors interested in history and outdoor recreation. Um, the trail will generate increased foot traffic for local businesses in both towns, uh, stimulating the local economy while supporting job creation. Um, so we have a lot of opportunities here. And just to tell you a little bit more about the grant itself, um, and so there's about seven different pots that you can kind of go from or choose from. You have like things on acquisition and engineering, acquisition to and planning or design and construction. Um, and so quite naturally, we're at the very beginning of this. And so we want to make sure that we're applying for these planning and feasibility. Um, and so that's why it's going to be very important to have the support of the council and the board 
Um, because again, we want to work alongside with you. I heard earlier that flood mitigation is, is extremely important. Uh, and I just remind the community that back in January when the Omicor engineers came, they gave us a timeline of seven years. However, they did say that they were willing to work with other researchers, and we do have researchers on our team uh, who will be directly working with us on this plan um, in terms of feasibility. A huge piece of what we want to do also is flood mitigation. Um, we have a great support at NC State with all of their researchers there who are already doing this work. Uh, we also partner with North Carolina Coastal Dynamic Lab. We know that they've done a lot of work with the town as well. Uh, we've done a lot of work with them behind the scene, informing them uh, on things that we see, uh, so on and so forth. I know that that connection and that relationship um, did not continue this previous year, uh, but we are in, in contact with Kofi Boone, who's also at North Carolina, or in North Carolina Uplift which is all about tourism um, in the state of North Carolina is funded by our state government. Um, and so all of these people we have already talked to and connected to and looking to partner with on this grant. Um, and so we feel, we feel really good about our odds, but it makes our odds even greater of receiving this grant if we have the support of the board. Uh, and we're talking to folks who typically review these type of grants, they thought it would be much better to have a revolution versus just a, a letter written um, of support. Um, and so I'm here asking that you all pass the resolution that you have in front of you. Um, and also, if you have any questions, I, I want to stop talking now and give you an opportunity to, to ask any questions that you may have. Questions from the board? Okay. Any questions? Uh, thank you, Mr. Dickens, for your hard work and dedication to the town of Pressfield. Um, I know the county is working with a project called Get Off the List to address the health disparities in Edgecombe County. They are working yes. with that, and that as well. So this trail will just feed right into what we're doing over in the Edgecombe County. My question yes. is, how are we going to motivate our people to participate in this activity that's going to be healthy for them? And I think yeah. Uh, I would say it's the, you know, it's the same thing that we're working through with Principal Homecoming, right? Um, I think our community have, has felt so hopeless for so long, um, and, we're, and we're struggling day to day with just, you know, our basic needs and necessity. Um, and so it's really about just being persistent. Uh, it's about, you know, educating and meeting our community where they are, not telling people what to do and dragging them along, but simply meeting them where they are. If you consistently provide opportunities, if you consistently educate, um, then I think that people will start to, you know, say that, hey, this isn't something that's just here one day and it's going to be gone tomorrow. I think we've had a lot of that come in and out of our community. And that's why it's important that our development uh, is happening and, and our community engagement is happening from people who are who are local who are local folks uh, because we can't just come in and have do something and leave. We got people to answer to um, at the end of the day when we make these type of decisions and commitments to our communities. Um, and so for me, it's all about being persistent and consistent. Uh, and I'm also on one of those subcommittees uh, with the with the county. Um, and it was one of the things that we've been pushing uh, before we started, before the county started to get off the list. Um, all of the things that they're talking about have always been a priority of, of Freedom War since 2019 when we were established. Um, and so we definitely are, are connecting ourselves into what the county has going on as well. I myself is sitting on the uh, affordable housing subcommittee uh, with the county and the get off to this. Um, and so I'm looking forward to uh, whatever I can do. Of course, you all know um, that my heart has always been Princefield. Uh, and so I'm, I'm happy to be back here uh, and, and to push the things that we've always had in mind to do. And so I'm hoping that this will be one of the first projects uh, that we can we can look to partner on. Uh, but back to your question, I'll say it again, it's just really about persistence and continuing to meet people where they are. Um, and you just gotta you just gotta keep going, you gotta keep doing it. So it may be five people one day, it may be three the next time you have an event, then it may be twenty, then it may be twenty-five. Um, you know, and so we're working on some things on our end to continue to keep folks engaged. What I continue to hear is people are looking for something consistent. Um, and so that's what we're going to look to, to partner with other folks in the community to provide. Do you have any idea of where you would start? In terms of? 
trail themselves? Yes, so the trail is already started. We okay. would basically be enhancing the, the trail that we already have. Um, some folks that we've already talked to who are part of NC Parks and Division have already talked about things like putting in a walkway to connect uh, one side of the, the trail, the existing trail, to the other. Um, I went by and rode by. He thought that it was already there, but it's not. Um, you know, we've, we've heard lots of different ideas. Um, around paddleboat trails and things like that. Well, one of the things that we have noticed is that the trail ends right at, um, I'm gonna call it Mr. Deeds. <laughs> uh, it ends right there. And so we are looking to find ways to continue that trail somehow all the way down the shallow land and, and incorporate the design that North Carolina, well, NC State Coastal Dynamic Lab uh, has already done, if you all remember the workshop, the three-day workshop over the administrative building after Hurricane Matthew. Uh, pretty much everything that we're doing is spot on and dead coming from what the research that has already been done. We're not looking to recreate the wheel. Uh, we're looking to take, you know, what the community has already put out there and it's in that report. Uh, we're looking to work with those same folks that are, who have helped establish those reports to basically execute things. And as, as my grandmother said earlier, to get something finish to get a project done um, you know this won't be the this will be the first round so this will just be looking to, to plan and feasibility to see hey what can be done can this mitigate flooding uh, how can and so in that planning we will also add a community engagement piece of how do we get the community to engage um, more in this trail what it was a community like to see on this trail so we'll be back out again in the community doing surveys asking questions, going door to door uh, to find out what would the community like to see in the, in the trail system. A lot of us don't even know what a trail system is. Um, and so we'll be, a lot of this will be educating people in our community. Um, you know, I, I have a way, I have a way of, uh, <laughs> of telling people that we'll be putting trails around your community. You're utilizing the exercise, but they, al they also increase your home value by like fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. People want to have a conversation about trail systems at that point. Uh, so you just got to know your community and what makes us tick. Um, and so, we, you know, we're going to be pulling in the heartstrings of things that really matter to our community. Um, and that is, you know, how can we mitigate flooding? How can we increase our home value that's valued almost eighty to $90,000 less than the average homes in North Carolina? Um, and so, you know, we have a lot of things that we're looking at um, and a lot of issues that we're facing. And so we're trying to find ways that we could, you know, mitigate some of these problems with, with one, one project. These two things may be something separate. Um, the African American Heritage Trail is that different from what you're doing? Is that adding to? Uh, that is very different. So those those tourism trails don't have like uh, paved walkways and things like that. Now people can put them there, uh, but essentially it's not kind of the, the same kind of trails. Okay. Um, this grant does not. Uh, this grant will not. Fund like if I was to say, hey, we want to do a uh, a trail to the three or the two historic landmarks in Princefield, it won't it won't fund that. Um, it, it has to be more so infrastructure, um, and this will this will be a big gap for us um, to to fund some infrastructure stuff too. Um, and we will be reaching out to the Army Corps engineers as well. Um, I already have spoken with them and have a contact there as well um, because we will have to have permission and be utilizing them to also help with the study um, because, again, part of this trail is on the levee um, and so we will have to consult with them um, anyway before we do anything, any enhancements uh, to that trail. I was looking at some research. Um, one of the, the things that people complained about uh, was how grassy it was and how it was hard to ride a bike on and so on and so forth. So people are coming to it, even if we don't know that they are. I mean, they're leaving, they're leaving some remarks behind. And so we'll, we'll look to, look to you know, correct some of those things and, and bring in some more people from outside of our community as well to spend, to spend some dollars within our community and help boost our economic development. Sidewalks that they're looking at for the walking audit throughout Edgecombe County, would that be a part of it or that's different as well? That is different. Okay. Um, yeah, it is different, but what we can do, so I know that um, I am going to, so basically the Grace Trail um, 
they have a conference in September, and I had an opportunity to bring someone with me, and so I'm bringing Kelvin, the um, the new director of Parks and Rec for Edgecombe County. So I reached out to him. So we're going to go together. So we can definitely we're going to have these conversations, and so that we're working together, and that our projects connect. Excellent. So he's the one heading up the walking audit for Princeville, anyway. It was the one yes. she retired. And yes. 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 Yeah, I remember. I yep, remember Miss Yvonne had a great conversation with her as well. She's done a lot of great things. The folks at NC State still ran with her today. <laughs> okay, I'll read the resolution. Any other questions? Okay. Resolution reads as follows: A resolution of the Board of Commissioners of Cracksville, North Carolina, in support of Freedom Falls application for a grant from the Great Trail State Program to develop and extend trails in disinvested communities. Whereas the town of Princeville, North Carolina, strives to secure the well-being, prosperity, and quality of life of its residents through fostering sustainable development, equal opportunities, and community engagement. Whereas Freedom Org is nonprofit is a nonprofit organization that invests in disinvested communities with the goal of improving the area's social, economic, and environmental conditions by creating opportunities for development, growth, and empowerment. Furthermore, the organization envisions further development in the infrastructure of the disinvested communities through the development of an expansion and of trails that enhance the residents' health, wellness, and connectivity. Whereas the Great Trail State Program provides important grant money for new and expanded trails of all types, paved greenways, natural surfaces, mountain biking, or shared use trail, horse riding arenas at private stables, are also included under this broad umbrella. Whereas the Great Trail State Goals support development of trails in disinvested communities to provide accessible recreation opportunities to promote a connection between communities and local assets such as parks or nature preserves, conserve natural resources, and stimulate economic activities. Whereas the Board of Commissioners for the Town of Princeville acknowledges the Freedom or Proposed Trail Development Application can potentially benefit our residents and advance our infrastructure projects in this town as we strive toward equitable redevelopment within our disenfranchised community. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners of the Town of Princeton, North Carolina, that it acknowledges and expresses its full support in favor for Freedom Org application for Great Trail State Program grant funds, which will assist with creating additional trail ranks within our community and could be utilized as a model throughout our state. This also is a resolution to the North Carolina State's Park requesting that consider favorably freedom or grant applications so that this opportunity can reach its maximum benefit in our community. Now, therefore, let it be resolved by the Board of Directors to, that a copy of this resolution will be forwarded to Freedom Org and North Carolina State Park Commission as documented, documentation thereof. Adopted this day of 2024, by the Board of Commissioners. What's the pleasure of the Board? I move and second. Then probably move and second that we pass the resolution for free and by four. Are there questions? All in favor, use the word sign I. Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Thank you so much, Ms. Dickens. Thank you all so much. Looking forward to working with you. Same here. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Durham. Always said. Always said. Always said. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good evening. Mayor, Commissioners, it's a pleasure to be with you this evening. Joe Durham, I'm a municipal operations consultant for the North Carolina League of Municipalities, one of four across the state, and my region includes from here all the way to the coast, all the way to Elizabeth City, so it's the northeast part of, part of the state. I enjoy working here. I'm going to take some personal privilege if I can. I spent uh, eight years as county manager here, five years working in the city of Rocky Mount, so 13 years total. So this is almost like home to me. So uh, again, one of the things that I want to accomplish is still to provide as much help as I can for, for jurisdictions. And I enjoy working with Princeville, enjoy working with the manager, and also, also the assistant manager with all of you. So continue want to continue that, that relationship. So I want to spend a few minutes talking to you this evening about roles and responsibilities. 
You may recall I was with you back in, I believe it was May of this year, and talked to you about the manager search and the process associated with that. And what I hear this evening is that Mr. Patterson saying you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So, I'm not sure what his intentions are. So, but anyway, he's giving me a look, so I'm stuck. But again, one of the things that, to remember is that we talk about roles and responsibilities, but you're looking for a manager right now, that he or she will also be looking at you. And uh, I want to spend some time talking about roles and responsibilities as it relates to the uh, elected officials and the, and the town managers. Next slide, please. So the mayor's responsibilities, and I want to make sure that anyone has a copy of this. I'm not going to spend, I'm not going to go through every slide, but just want to uh, make, highlight some of those important parts. One, of course, the mayor presides at all the uh, city council, all the board commissioners meeting. Meetings calls the special meetings uh, of the council, votes to break the tie, assumes all those powers that are enumerated in the general standards. The mayor's responsibility. Next slide. Uh, council authorized to organize and organize city government, creates and abolishes uh, offices, positions, departments. Uh, uh, all, also, an important thing there is number three and confers powers and duties upon the mayor pursuant to law. And the council manager form of government, this is what you get a council manager form of government. You appoint a manager, number four, to serve at your pleasure. Back that up one little bit again. As employer, the manager is the body in which the manager is directly responsible and accountable. He or she is not responsible to the citizens, but he or she is indirectly and sometimes directly, but again, he or she is accountable to you. So these are all the duties and responsibilities of a city manager. And number two, appointing and suspending, removing all city officers and employees, attending meetings, preparing your annual budget and program to city council, annually submit to make available a complete report on finances. That's an audit that has to be done every year. Uh, any other reports that you deem to be important and necessary for that person to provide. Again, all of this is required, it is authorized by, by city council. So these are the responsibilities as outlined in the general statutes for the council manager form of government. I reiterate again, this is the form of government that you have adopted. Uh, we'll go to the next slide. I can spend a lot of time talking to you about county management, but I'm sure you will know that. So the mayor council form of government, this is a predominant form of government. Uh, most of the cities in North Carolina that are, that are a larger jurisdiction have the council manager form of government. When you get above 5,000 or so, uh, that is the predominant form of government that, that, that occurs in North Carolina. Next slide. Next slide. So the differences, uh, again, uh, council manager governments, the populations are greater than 2,500. Of course, again, most of the cities in North Carolina that are of, of size use the council manager. The smaller jurisdictions have a mayor council where the council will assume more of the duties and responsibilities associated with management and operation of the city. Next one. So it's important. One of the things that people, I get asked from time to time, what causes challenges in, in managing local government, a lot of that relates to board manager relations. It's important to have, and you've heard me say this last time, I think back in May, it's important to have effective communications. That's how we become successful. Trust relationships are important. Uh, relationship between the board and the management is critical to the organization's long-term success. Building trust is essential to working together effectively. Uh, this happens, that's the important part of the book about all of this. Uh, next slide. Common problems. This interferes by board members in operational matters. Understand that the board appoints who? The town manager. Do you have responsibility for the public works director? No. 
manager does. And one of the problems that occurs, and again, I can give you tons and tons of examples, you'll have, and I'm not saying that you do this, but you'll have uh, elected officials who will call employees directly to their, to their office or to their home and give them directives. Uh, that All of the directives should be provided by that town manager. He or she is the person that's in charge. He or she is running the office. And it makes it difficult for employees, and I'm not lecturing you, just giving you information, to, well, who, who am I working for? I work for the elected officials, or I work for the town manager? Uh, so it, it's common, it, it happens from time to time, but again, it's up to the town manager to run, run the, uh, the organization. Another part of that, managers that hasn't made decisions, managers are paid to make decisions. They have to. And they have to make a lot of those decisions not you know, in consultation with you, but the manager's job is to make decisions. Uh, manager, managers sometimes delegate difficult decisions upward. You should not go upward. You're paying that person to do that. Again, uh, that could, could have some negative impacts on the organization. So effective board management teamwork is characterized by the obvious, the items there. Two-way flow of information, information sharing is always important and critical. I was talking to a city councilman today and talking about the challenges between the elected officials and the appointed officials. And sometimes they say, well, I don't know what's going on. I don't know who's doing what. Again, it's, it's the responsibility of the manager to make sure that the board stays informed. Your responsibility as elected officials is also to inform the manager. You're getting information from citizens at all times about different issues. We've heard about some of those tonight. A lot of those things you can't do by yourself, so you have to be able to give that to the manager. And also, there are lots of issues that will come up that are that should be considered by the entire board. And I'll, I'll never forget, well, I'll tell a story, quick story. So I have a, had an elected official come to me and told me to start an issue. And so my response back, yeah, you talk to these other board members, no, I want you to do it right now. I can't do that. That's not a manager's job. The manager is has to be directed by whom? Not one member, not two members, but the entire board. And a lot of times when that's an issue, then it's important for that to come to the entire board for their consideration. And, uh, and again, it makes the life easier for you as elected officials and also for the appointed manager. So it's always that two, two way flow of information. Constructive debate is essential between you as elected officials and also de debate with the manager. You have to have that. If you have a manager that says, I will do everything that you say, then that's not a good manager. If you hire a manager, that person is a professional manager, and he or she will have ideas about how to make your uh, your town or city as effective as it can be. Uh, commitment to uh, strategic direction. Always important. The board and the manager need to be on the same page. I think this the uh, board does have a strategic plan or something similar to that that you're trying to implement. It's important that you all pull in that same direction. Next slide. So board management relations require an understanding of the organization's mission and plan, which I just talked about. Uh, strategic and business plans, capabilities, implementation of plans, probability of, of achieving outcomes, and each other's expectations. All of you come to the table with different things that you like to accomplish. And in order for you to accomplish those, it's important that you work together. One member is not going to be able to make a change in, in, in an organization. Because that person has to be able to work with the other board members or to come to the consensus, develop the policy, and that policy is implemented by staff. That's the most effective way for the exam. Okay. Understand the vote board's role. Okay. Next one. Uh, I'm not going to get into this one. This is the uh, elements of board CEO relationship. We've talked about that. 
board chair relations. I'll talk about that real quick. There's a link between, let me back up one if I can, the, uh, between the board and match between meetings and should be aware of any law to require him or her to act. Uh, it's important that we work together on that one. It's often invaluable for the chair to guide the CEO about matters of concern. So the mayor is that key person there. Uh, should have that communication and contact with board members if there are issues and concerns. Mayor should address the manager. If you have issues and concerns as individual members and things, things should be done, those need to go to the manager. So that's how you have those effective relationships and effective communication. Expectations of the board chairs and, and mayors, the uh, chair and the mayor, of course, manages the governing board meetings. The spokesperson for the governing board helps in the city, county, government team building, manages conflict, shapes the board's agenda, and is hopefully able to promote a high performing governing board. That is key. In order for this to work, it has to be effective. Key points there is to understand roles and responsibilities. This is reducing the confusion that may occur. It also improves work relationships and accountability. And that accountability is on both sides. It is with the elected officials as well as the appointed officials. Uh, keep the community's needs and interests at the center of, of work. Good communication strategies and personal self-awareness uh, can minimize and resolve conflict. And one of the things that's always important is to use good data in making decisions. And a, a lot of times you may have an initiative, but you don't have the information. That is given to staff. Staff does the research. Staff does, is, uh, does all the research associated with it. And your decisions, hopefully, that are made are data-driven decisions. It's always important to do that. Next slide. And I'll be glad to share this with you. I will share it with you. And we have to respond to any questions or comments right now. Questions from the board? <coughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much. And you, I'll stay with y'all. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, finance report. Questions, comments, concerns? The deposits, the county, what is that PSWM stand for? Uh, that is um, income we receive from the uh, Winter County Collect for like the uh, sewer maintenance. The maintenance so, since we don't have our own uh, accounts receivable, they collect it and they send it over here. Okay. Do you think of, think of it as solid, solid waste management? Um, is, is it, was it right for GFL to get two thousand yeah. dollars dollar check? Yes, that, that was a, uh, uh, one of those payments had not been made. Okay. 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 Was for the museum, you know, how they got the artifacts mm -hmm. and they, they went through the inventory boards and all that. And they have to get that approved through the state and they have to get it approved from the federal. So that's what that is. I need to understand that I wasn't funding that town pay, that was funding that came to me. Right. So all that was already worked out from that being a So it wasn't, it wasn't, the town wasn't on the book. We had already received the money. We just had to pay it. So it came to me. So, Mr. Jackson, therefore, um, do you not see or invoice or anything that had been paid prior to that? No, sir. Because I understood that it had been paid no, sir. twice. No, sir. I will go back and double check again, but I'll be, we, run, we run through QuickBooks because every check that gets cut here comes through QuickBooks. We do a vendor search to make sure we haven't paid it before. Mm -hmm. We paid them something now. Yeah, keep in mind that twenty-five thousand was just that portion of yeah. what was funded. The whole overall was like forty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah, we, yeah. we would have yeah. paid. That makes well, sense. Yeah, we just didn't pay that. Yeah. Yeah. I knew we had paid something. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, 
Now we have new computers in the town hall? Yes, we had to, um, as we look to upgrade to the new um, uh, financial software, what we had just was not uh, able to keep up. But what we're doing, we just didn't get rid of those computers. We are going to refurbish those computers. Uh, we moved those, the new computers go to the town manager, finance manager, and the assistant town manager. And then we're we have desktops because we need to update that for the town clerk and the finance clerk. But the other ones are going to be refurbished. Uh, we're also working, I think we've set up, we've established where uh, there's going to be a computer for the board. When they come in, if y'all want to come into work here in the office, we'll have a computer that's in the bed. But y'all can just come and work on that. Yeah, and, and that did come from the director's grant. So yeah. we approved that school board. So it wasn't. It wasn't funding that we had to deal with. That was funding that we were given by uh, Office of State Budget Management to assist us with personnel, the audit, computer software. That, that's okay. The backlash on the truck, what happened to that? Oh, uh, what happened was it was extremely hot that week. I don't know if you remember that week, but it was extremely hot. And the windows were rolled up. And when it opened uh, and they got in, they shut it. But that's just uh, that's just not, that's common on the Ford. My car, I had to do it twice. I don't know why that is. I don't know whether it's the way they see them or what. But our remedy to that is now we just crack the window. So it's better to crack the window when you get out and get it and have a crack. You know what Ford means? Yeah, <laughs> it, it means it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions on the the, the transfer for three hundred forty three thousand seven hundred fifty dollars? Yes. What that was that was when we got the director grant, which talked about the computers and the software and everything. Everything and, and so you understand that everything that we get, any funding we get, whether whether it's from federal, state, whether it's receipts from the county, wherever, everything comes into the general fund because we can only have one account that it can come flow into. What we did is when we got the director grant, we set up a separate checking account so we could separate all the funding where it needs to be. So we have an account for our for funding, we have an account for director grant, we have a director account for anything that we deal with in core, anything for the farmer's market, we put all these in separate accounts. So once we set these checking accounts up, we now have to go back in and make a transfer to move the appropriate funds that should be in the, into those checking so when you see those large transfers, uh, and we'll, we'll do a better job of pointing that out, but that's what that is. We had to take that money out of the uh, zero fund, which came in, and put it in the directed grant fund. That way we are tracking all the purchases that we make. So the last one that I have is the miscellaneous expense on the statement of revenue and expenditures. Yes, and that actually was the girl left. Uh, I'm waiting on them to get back to me. I believe what that, and that's why I put it there, so it would be your mark I mean, I believe that is our annual uh, uh, insurance that they cover us through. Okay. Those, and it was, it's two payments. I think one was like 21,000, one was 4,000, okay. which makes up that total. But I put it there, so I would fear market. And once I find out that that's what it actually is, I will okay. hold it accordingly. All right. Other questions on the finance report? Okay, public works. Oh, y'all do any more questions on my end? Question for public works. How are we looking on uh, get these amendments? Right? Um, yeah. I will mention that uh, you'll notice that we do not have an amendment request tonight. The reason why we do not have an amendment request, if you're looking at the budget and you see some negatives, is because of what I just described all the funding coming into the general fund. So we didn't have the checks or anything set up, we just got our checks. So everything we did for the computers, all that came out of the direct appearance, we ended up paying out of the general fund. But now what we will see next month is you'll see a transfer back from the direct grant fund, pulling that money back into the general fund. 
And then if there's any amendments made after we bring that back over and repay the general fund, that's when we'll do it then. Okay, so that's why you don't have an agenda for this question now. Thank you so much. Questions on public works? How are we looking with um, funding for new equipment? Uh, I think it's in your. Uh, yeah, we have we we're going to request it to come out of ARPA funding, and we have that later on. Okay. But if you look at that packet that I think Commissioner Maverick has, anything we we gave you a we gave you sheets. Okay. To make it simple for you to understand. Okay. Uh, how we are willing to move forward. Okay. Other questions about the board? City Center? I do have a question regarding uh, to give a stipend. What would the outcome would be a turn? That you want to you want to give your stipend for the yes, yes, that's fine. What we just need back is we just you will write us a check and give your receipt and that way you can have it for your uh, income tax or anything. At the end of the year, we'll make sure you have that state. Uh, submit cash. We would prefer you to submit a check. If you do not have, but if you want, or can you do a money order? I can. Yeah, we prefer that just because we don't like the cash transfer or anything. Like that. That's just a policy we're going to And the attorney did address that in the email that this week. Say that again, The attorney did address that in the email this week. Yeah, and he said that if you would just. Stating that you you weren't under pressure or anything to do that, you are just wanted to do that. Okay, I'll do it for you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Sir. Okay. Questions for Ms. Tate. Uh, who is Mr. Cooper with the Veterans Administration? He is a veteran himself. Okay. And uh, he's working out of Rocky Mount. And he's wanting to come uh, here in Princeville to see if there are veterans that have needs, specifically housing, and any other needs that they may have. Uh, they're doing it all over uh, the eastern uh, part of North Carolina. And uh, he's wanting to uh, come here to do that. And we're in conversation in determining whether or not uh, the center could be used as a host, the same way we do with Freedom Hill, to address the needs of the veterans here at Princeton. You, you need to put that to a vote, Mr. Jackson. Well, we haven't discussed it. Okay. I left it open okay. uh, to where I would discuss it with uh, Ms. Carter and Mr. Jackson okay. to determine if that's feasible for us to do. Okay. Uh, when we get all the information okay. that I need to get from him. Thanks so much. Any other questions for this state? I, I would like to take this moment to uh, thank uh, Commissioner Jones for what he's doing. It means so much to the seniors. Um, they're very appreciative. Okay, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I would also like to share one other thing that's extremely important. Um, I got um, an email from Tara uh, that works with Nash, Edgecombe, and Halifax County in the action program and wanted to know if our seniors would give them a list of the supplies that they needed. And so last week, they delivered 24 boxes of supplies to the seniors, roughly in the amount of $1,800. Mm -hmm. And uh, the seniors were delighted to have that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I try to make all the resources I can to help those seniors the way they won't have to spend out a great deal of money. Mm -hmm. The basic needs to be used every day. Thank you so much. What to do? Anything else? Okay. Based on the County Sheriff's Office report, questions, comments, concerns? Carolina Family Health Centers? Prince 
the fire department, be the chief level. Anything, Assistant Chief? Uh, I'm the captain, but uh, captain. I don't have anything. Unless okay. I can assistance have any questions or need assistance with uh, smoke detectors or anything. Everybody has a smoke detector? Everybody have a uh, carbon monoxide detector? So everybody needs some to see the fire department. Oh, yeah. Mr. Jackson, I believe you were going to say it. No, you go ahead. Um, where are we at? We are still getting, uh, Mr. Kermit, so we have those folks out of all within the team. I would also like to mention that uh, the fire department will be helping us with uh, sprinkler, the sprinkler system. Uh, just so you know, we had the uh, county health inspector came by, I think, about a week and a half ago and said that the Town Hall Senior Center has been inspected since it's been like three years. So we have to get that inspected. So we're working to get that inspected. Part of that is the sprinkling system and all that. So Mr. Kermit and his crew will be helping us with that. We did get that scheduled. I believe we're doing that on the 20th. It has to be done by the end of this month, but I believe they're coming the 27th, right? So we have to incur that cost. Uh, and then if they come and find anything, of course,
we were able we are able to and, and keep in mind by doing this, essentially are you doing this freeing up money that the town has already spent to just reimburse the town. So all the costs that we had for the uh, Princeville Youth Academy, because it's eligible under ARPA, we recommended that you allow us to use that and to put that back into the town. Because we pay that out of town funding, but if you allow us, we can take that ARPA funding and, and replenish the town's budget. We also have the financial software that we want to purchase that you all sit in on the different meetings. Uh, I think you all, all agree that it was, it was very positive for the town. It's going to streamline how the finances are done, help with the audits. So uh, we're recommending that we could use that for that as well. Uh, I know at the last board meeting you also mentioned that you wanted us to find 50000 for the housing repair. We are, Alexis, Ms. Carter's hard work. She was able to identify 100000 for the housing repair. So what we need to do is if you allow, if you want that, then we just need to come up with a plan from the board on how we're going to implement starting to look at the houses of the citizens that need to be repaired and go ahead and start that process. And then we asked, we needed some public works equipment so that our guys, now that they're fully staffed, we need some more equipment so the guys can all be working at the same time. So we have for 5000 so roughly, we're asking for around 166,000, which will still leave you about 300 some thousand for other projects. So do we need to read the ordinance? I don't. I don't really think you need to read the ordinance. Okay. You can if you want to. Okay. Just so we're having in a minute. Just read the title. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the 2022-2023 project ordinance amendment number two? So moved. Probably the second that we approve the 2022-2023 project ordinance amendment number two. Other questions? All in favor, you vote sign aye. Uh, Opposed nay. Uh, Sammy, thank you so much. And if you will, we uh, we did redo the scope of work. I meant we amended the scope of work too. That's that one right here. Uh, oh, the, yeah, proposed scope of work. That's 166000 that we asked. But so that you know, the other items that we asked you to consider and put in by uh, importance, uh, public works equipment, we already got that really, but that would be future equipment that we need. We asked you to consider Heritage Park. Uh, we did ask you to consider PYA for 2025. We asked you to consider personnel. You're going to need a project writer. I think you're going to need a grant writer as well. You did add in there cleaning out the ditches. So if that's the priority you want, we just want you to rank it for us. And then a uh, multi purpose recreation facility in place of the farmer's market. So those are just our suggestions. If you have uh, suggestions you've heard from your constituents, by all means, y'all can tell us whatever you want us to do. Uh, I did hear that ditches are big tonight, so that, that's already out there. Uh, and so, if you just want us to put fillers out there and get quotes for what it would be for the ditches, so at least you have real time information, uh, we can do that as well. I'll just direct us and we'll, we'll, we'll move. So, when do you need for us to uh, look at this, Mr. Jackson, so you, we can move forward? Uh, well, you know, I, I, I agree. You have the money, so the only thing that stops you from spending the money is the city. Next next meeting. Next meeting will be great. But you can go ahead and put out the, the three. The yes, um, you need to tell us if you want us to go ahead and put out an RP to get the for the ditches. Um and then if we can get in contact with DOT to ask them where we are on the list of cleaning out their ditches in town principal. Okay. Anything else? Cleaning up the dish, when we run into private properties and we have that issue, yeah. if we pull it clean the ditch. I don't, I will have to check on that, but I'm pretty I sure mean, that if the ditches are there, they're covered under what is considered that town property to where you don't have to have consent. From, I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain, but let me verify yeah, that. Well, it's and, right. And, and, and what we may want to do also is just 
when we get on, we'll, we'll contact DLC, as you said, to see when they're coming. If they're contracting with people to come and do it, we may just want to see if we can piggyback on those contractors since they already have the equipment here, you know, yeah. and so just see if we can do that as well. Right. No, they, they want to use uh, this week, uh, a lady was discussing her ditches, and she said DOT was supposed to come out, but they told everybody on the street to call DOT, not just one or two individuals. All DOT for your property and say if it's if it's DOT property. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll get some information on that. So as you're saying, we need we just need you to approve the uh, scope of work, and then we need you to make a motion to allow us to go out and put the RFP out for the digital. Is there a motion to approve the RFP for the digital? So the proper moving second that we approve the RFP for the digital. Are there questions? All in favor, just vote sign aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. I have it. Is there a motion to approve the scope of work for the um, proper funding? So moved. Second. Probably moved second that we approve the scope of work for the ARP funding. Other questions? All in favor, just vote sign aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. I have it. Thank you so much. Question. No question. Okay. Uh, what's next? We talked about housing repair already, right? Well, you probably need because the last word we had from the board was that you wanted us to find fifty thousand dollars. We found so Miss Alexis has found a hundred thousand dollars. So if you want us to move forward with that hundred thousand dollars figure, then well, we, we, we need y'all to tell us that. At the top of the where the people start signing up. My suggestion is what we've talked about before. Start at the top and work way down until you run out of funds. And then the next round we'll start where we left off and continue on. Okay. So I yeah. think we need to look at some of the individuals that we have that are entities that and some that were denied that were that really need the they need handicap ramps. Mm -hmm. We should start with those first and then we should move on and look, look at that really what is really needed. You know, because these homes, some of them were not flooded. So we just, again, first we should look at the ones that are disabled or handicapped. And let's get them with, with and it's only a few, let them be to the top of the list. And let's move from there. And then we just work our way through with the rest of the, the applicants on the list that have already been approved. And there were those on the, um, the deals in the ETGA. That's the highest of the house. Only Prince Field. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go on. That's four around. So it's only three of them, real. If, if I can suggest this, I and I, I know this may not go over well, but I would suggest that you might want to just open up this process all over again. That way, the board can get new applications. That would give the town the ability to number one make sure that. People we're helping are actually citizens of Prince Vale. And the board can recommend, based on priority and need, which ones y'all want us to do first. Because if you have people who don't have a ramp that they can't access in and out, I would think that would be a higher priority than maybe somebody needing a toilet. And if you just, if you just go about what you have right now, I think, I, and I know people. I might say that you know I was there before, but the process needs to be streamlined. It needs to clearly dictate what you're going to, what you, what the board wants to cover, what they don't want to cover. And then I think you just should, and you just for consideration, and you just open it up and have the application process over again. And that way we can get the applications, we can get it sent to y'all. Y'all can look it over, and then you can make a decision. We'll do whatever you want to do, so, but it, it, it could possibly, and you can even take into consideration those who put in on the first round, that, you know, they may get priority for this round, but that priority would take place to help needs and, and things like that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Where you're not excluding them because they didn't put it in the first time, you could say we would look at these, say you got 30, we would look at these 30 that did it the first time. But we would also look to see if there's new people who were excluded last time 
who have a higher need, mm -hmm. and that, that you're not necessarily excluding the 30, but if there's somebody, like I said, that needs bread, that's a higher need that you might need to bump up. And if it, just because they didn't, they could have been told last time that they, they couldn't apply. You don't know. But mm -hmm. now you open it back up, you're still at that 30, and they, they're willing, they're, they're able to come back in and update their application or whatever. But now you get a chance to prioritize the real need. I, I, I just, I don't think we can just take the applicants that we have now, who know who lives in Princeton, and then we decide what the needs are. We still can open it up again for additional ones. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. and then just go from the top to the most important ones, one with the health disparities, take care of them first. And then maybe, of course, we're going to have to have the ceilings that are leaking, floors that are rotten, are those the type of things. We want to make sure everybody's living in capital conditions. But the other piece is that when we were talking about adding additional people, the fund is real short. It's real short. So it's a lot to look at. But it's still looking for additional funds to help with that. I mean, they went from a, a, a fifty thousand to a hundred thousand, and so now we're still looking for extra funds. So who knows? Mrs. Jackson or Alexis may locate that extra money to help. It may be nineteen additional people, additional families that can use. I mean, and as he's saying, <clears throat> looking yeah. at the priorities and prioritizing what they need and you know what's important. Well, what I was basing it on what we Reeves came up with was 150,000, and with 150,000, we ain't having like 3,000 to play with. Now you're talking about 100,000 to do the math, it's way less. So they definitely would have to find. What do you mean do the math? Room. Because if it's 3,000, uh, and if we, if, if, if even if we decide to give an individual um, 3,500, or 4,000, if we're still seeking and looking for money, Commissioner Meyer, we may find it to help these help individuals, whoever they are. You know, if it's another, uh, another additional 19 people, you know, we just can't say we don't have it. I mean, we started this, so we're going to start with these first 30 people, and then we're going to move along, and we'll work it. It, it. it can happen. We just can't say it won't happen. It can happen. Well, let me ask Mr. Patterson since he's here. Mr. Patterson, can we give you a number for your dollar amount? What? And, uh, and we try to find additional funds. I would, I would have to look into it. And, uh, I hear what you're saying. Yes, and uh, I guess we can definitely ask. But right now, we're, we can definitely ask. But as far as FEMA is concerned, they're running out of money. They ran out of money already this year. Um, and it's, it's getting to a point where a lot of the money that was infrastructure and all of those things that are coming to a close. Mm -hmm. Those things coming out of COVID. Uh, it never hurts to ask. You're not talking about a tremendous sum of money. But the reason they were, some of those things weren't fixed were because of antiquated um, the policies surrounding it just weren't good it's because you could only do this and you couldn't do that and uh, especially with the, some of the federal money and how it was interpreted yeah. we'll always ask and i work with ron on that and um, we'll have a meeting this week or next week i'd like to request Yeah, if we don't request, we yeah, go for Turn around to 
Yeah, so to think about that, you probably, I mean, we could we could do our our due diligence and look at it, but the way it would probably, the best way, I think, for the town would be that we would write it in such a way to, like we might have the initial cost for the grant writer, but we would write it in their contract that future year employment would be based upon them securing grant that covered their salary. So as they were writing those grants, they would be writing into that grant their salary. Uh, so the town would not be on have the burden of that. Uh, so, but that would probably be some since we don't have that in a scope of work, you'd have to get that and, and submit that at the next meeting because you'd have to you'd have to include that change to the scope of work with the ARC funding to include that grant writer. So we were talking about probably two to three months. Well, it just depends on how long, how long you want to keep it out for the grant writer and what we get in. But it would be at least till we got to the next board meeting. But you can have everything ready to go. You can have the, the job description and everything you want ready to go. And once y'all give us the green light, we we'll just pull the trigger. Okay. Um, other questions on the housing affair? Did you get your answers? No. no. <laughs> I just, uh, we didn't really make a decision on how we would be moving forward with the housing affair. Um, if it's something you want to put on the next agenda, just let me know. I do want to point out that I believe a big reason we did not get RFP or better before previous is it was too wide range. A lot of workers were not sure how to bid the project from a toilet repair to a roof repair. It was too wide and they couldn't bid appropriately. So that is why it is important to consider setting grammar qualifications and guidelines for how the money would be used so that we can get appropriate bids. Mm -hmm. um, so if we need to put it on the next agenda or a special call meeting to discuss how the process would go. Any questions? Even even with the 30 or whatever, um, with applications, a process, they've already been said, okay, you're approved. So the thing would be next to me would, would to go through and let the applicant, I know it seems like a lot, come back and uh, say what they what their needs are. And at that, at that time, they can be told, well, we can, it's not enough money allocated to do this, but it's enough to do this. This is more important than that. So let's, let's work on that. Let's come up with some type of format that we can use to um, bring this the, the approved citizens back in and let's go from there. What do you think about that, Mr. Jackson? That, and you know, really see what their the main needs are. Yeah. And what and then let them know what we can and cannot do. Right. Work sessions needed. Yes, sir. Uh, from my perspective, and working with Ron, I was uh, out of the way until we had that call before I asked about it enough because we might as well ask the call. And then now with Mr. Jackson's state. Yeah, now it's going to be a result of the investigation. <coughs> Yeah, it's all just the structure that we're talking about. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Any questions on the work sessions, meetings, discussion, concerns? So we have, um, I do think that that work session is good, but at the same time, we there's a lot going on because we're having the monthly meetings and then those sessions and then the comments or questions we're not going to be able to, they're not going to be able to ask, right? And we're not going to be able to answer. Is that right, Mr. Jackson? Are you talking about for the citizens? Right. Yeah, there would be public comments. Right. So then that really, it, to me, is something that we should we should work on together with the board. Yeah. Um, get their feedback. I mean, see what they say. Um, let them tell us 
what they feel. But then we just have our own session or do it at some point in, you know, figure out a way to make it convenient for us because if we can't give them feedback and if we can't give them feedback and they, you know they're asking us questions, so it's just a waste to me, to me. It's a waste of time to have them to come out mm -hmm. that many times just to so you know let them just say what they feel or as they do in the, in the regular meetings, and then we'll just go from there because this work session I just don't think that it's, it's going to work out because that's that's like two or three times in how many times a week was this scheduled to do? Twice in a week or twice in a month? Twice in a month? Yeah, it was like the second, I think we had we said the second and fourth week. And um and, and of course, you know, the problem is that and we've tried and we've looked at if we don't need to do this, but everything we keep getting back from our attorneys and everything else that we do. Anytime you have more than two commissioners together, you have to have a hearing, a public hearing, a public hearing notice, you have to have hearing, and, and people, and, and citizens have to be there. Uh, now, for these meetings, we said that you wouldn't take public comments, but we work at the pleasure of the board. If y'all want to have public comments, that's y'all's pleasure. We, we, we. But the issue is the finding the time to get all of the commissioners and the mayor together uh, so that we can address any issues that you have. We can have work sessions and have discussions of how y'all want us moving forward uh, and get you all together at one time. This is very difficult when we don't have everybody there uh, and we don't have what we need is the participation so that we can have everybody moving us in the right direction. Okay, it, it's, it's different if I meet, if I talk to the mayor one day, he, he wants to go one way and I talk to the commissioners another day and they want to go a different way. We kind of stuck because we want to be moving as, as y'all unified as the board moves us. Does that make sense? I don't know how we do that. No, because remember what Mr. Durham said, the directives come from this board right here. Yes, that's what this, this is where we're supposed to put you, to give you the directive to move forward. What I say in the meetings, doesn't outside this meeting, doesn't matter. I got you. Yeah. But, but yeah, just from, understand from how we see it. A meeting once a month, for like two or three hours, is really we need more from that. We need we need more from y'all than that. It's just we need more from y'all. Y'all running, y'all, y'all directing us. Well, yes, what about this thing, Mr. Jackson? How about, you know, as we had said we we're gonna do before, let's have the citizens to come out and, and let them voice, you know, maybe let have a session for them and then have everything documented for the board to but each, you know, we can take and look at it and we can sit down and we can, you know, we can look at it and talk about how we, you know, if it's two of us, talk with you um, and go from there um, and compare, you know, and look at maybe they don't, this, these two don't want this, these two don't want that, but I don't, I don't really see how it's going to work. We can give it a try, but I, you know, I don't want to just push it aside, but it's just the fact that the comments, you know, the feedback. So I guess it's just documenting it, documenting it and listening to it that will make the difference. But it's whatever the board decides that they want to. You look at what you wish. You should stay with me then. Commissioner Brown, I like what you said. We need to give citizens to speak more about the needs, really, and then we can get to work. We, we got to hear from the citizens more and get something done. Yeah. You know, they kind of, you know, listen to the citizens, and then we should get to work. And get some, you know, let's have them, you know, not just continuous to get together. Talking about what the citizens, you know, we've been doing this for the last since November for me, you know, and I don't 
think they cuffs and anything. They get frustrated, get phone calls. Yeah. Listen to them and then we go, you know, get with town manager. Uh, and, let, and, and that was one of the reasons why we sub selected the 2 to 3 p.m. time frame. Because what we hear is that these meetings are too late for most of us for them to come out. And so we need to have it more accessible to them so where they can come out during the day and they don't have to worry about getting home at night and driving and all that. They can come in and, and have a, a day and, and just come out. We're open to whatever. Ms. Mark? I would just like to hear from the citizen that is here, and if that would be the case, and get some uh, feedback from them right now, because we got the majority of the ones that normally come, they are here. So that's my take on it. Okay. Anything else I have? So, what I'm hearing is true. Um, our ultimate job is to be a service. I understand that we're a service as a citizen. But my understanding of this work session is such that we all can get the information at the same time. Yeah. Not to exclude the citizen, but the ultimate uh, objective of the work session of the commissioners and mayor to get the information at the same time. This, this is that, and, and that is correct. And just understand our challenges. Just y'all have different personalities, right? Yeah. So y'all gonna hear what I say to you. If I say it in private, you gonna hear it separately. If I say the same thing on a script with each one of you in a different, in a separate meeting, y'all each gonna walk away from that meeting with different questions and different thoughts about what I say. If y'all all together, y'all can all ask me right back at the same time. What do you really mean? What are you really saying? And then y'all have y'all might have questions for each other. And we're all here. The citizens are here. They can put their input in. It, it, it all around it, because y'all take y'all's lead from the citizen. We take y'all lead. We take our lead from y'all. Why not have us all in one spot at one time? So there ain't no confusion when we walk about here. Because if we don't do it that way, I guarantee you. You go hear it differently when I say it, and you go hear it differently when I say it, and you know how it is after two or three people say it, it don't sound nothing like it originally sounded when it came out. But this reality of it all. All right, citizens, what do you think? I, I just wanted to ask a question. When you were determining if you were going to have all the citizens come and voice their needs and whatever, I wanted to know how many of you commissioners meet with the people in your ward? How often do you do that? Because that would be a really key way of putting the pulse on the people that you're serving. So if they have needs, they're going to come to you with needs. So when you actually meet together as a whole, you have some idea of what their needs are. It can help interject while they're trying to explain or tell you. Do you meet with the people in your wards? Do you have regular meetings with your constituents? It was set up at one point to say um, that was before I came on the board. Um, so that's just something that we have to um, regroup with. Um, as far as me, uh, and I'm sure some of the other commissioners, we get to see our citizens through the community and we get a chance you know, to talk to them and let them express everything that they are feeling at that time. But it also would be a good thing to have them to come out and have like forum with them so that they could express themselves mm -hmm. and let us know exactly. I mean, um, but it's just, we, gotta, we have to start somewhere. But that, that would be a good idea to, because how my, my thing is, how can you serve them and meet their needs when you don't know what their needs are if you don't communicate and engage with them on a regular basis? How can you really represent their needs? When you're coming into a meeting to make decisions that's going to affect them directly and indirectly. And you need to know who the people are in your ward. Mm -hmm. So you will know what their needs are or their concerns are. When I stand on the same note that Commissioner Brown said, there's a lot of citizens that do give us feedback and we do bring those concerns to the board. 
and also address the town manager. I know I'm in Cal quite a few myself from time to time. So I want to say maybe a regular, but if you want to say every other week, at least so many times a month, I have to look at it. But yeah. But it's good to know because there may be people that you don't see, yeah. that you don't hear from, that That's have true. needs. I had a lady come over to my office today and wanted to know if I could help find money somewhere because her, she lived in a trailer for 20 years. The roof was falling in when it rained, it rained in her trailer and uh, the rodents and everything is in her house and she desperately needs help. And I didn't know her, a perfect stranger. Uh, and, and what I told her that she needed to come over here talk to the clerk, get her information, and uh, we would connect her to her uh, commissioner that could help meet the needs that she had. But, you know. She, yeah, you knew she was the president? Yes, she was. She was. Because I know we had some going around. Yeah, she was from Princeton. Yeah, she was. Very good. So it's important. Other citizens? Yes, ma'am. Uh, when you say work session, um, are you talking about something that the board needs to talk about, or are you talking about, there are two different work sessions that I see. A work session that the board get together and have discussions about the needs of the citizens and the needs of the town. Then the session with the citizens that they can come in and discuss their needs and that you can give them on-time answers or if you can't answer that at once, you make sure that you're going to get back with them. Now, you can call a work session, but you're not going to get all the citizens at Pressfield to come in here. You might get 10 or 20. You might get, you might not get that many. But a work session for the board, I used to have a work session, and we would talk about things together and we discussed things. We would advertise it. People didn't come, but we got a chance to sit down and talk about things and uh, agree to disagree. And it was good. It, it, it was good. It kept us from having knockout, drag out meetings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had those. And then we had discussions with citizens. The citizens come in and they, they give you a uh, their grievances and what they thought. So to me, the more interaction you have with the citizens, the more uh, more they understand how the board works. Right now, a lot of people don't know how the board works. The more interaction you have with the citizens, the more understanding they have about the board, and the more they trust you because people don't trust politicians. <laughs> they don't trust politicians. So the more, but to me too, that the the board, the five of you, should have some sessions with the manager to discuss things, some things. To me, that's, that, but your interaction with the citizens is very important. Yeah, I think that's what they were talking about, having a group session with the board and the manager. Well, based, based on that, I think it's probably true, but then based on that, I'm going to go back with Commissioner Jones that he read that first part. But I'm gonna read the second part that says it's scheduled by week first session with the board. These meetings will include all board members and will be open to the public, but will not include any public comment session. So public comments are only required once a month at the regular board. So I, I hear what Ms. Parker says two fold piece here. And so we got to distinguish it and be respectful of which piece. We want to carry out. And you could do both. If you're having two meetings a month, one meeting could be for the citizens, and one meeting could be closed off for the public for the board to discuss matters. Is that the pleasure of the board for you all to decide how you would like meetings to go? And if you want public comment for that. Very good. Awesome. Won't sleep on it for a month? Yes. Okay. Won't sleep too long. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to talk yes, you have uh, both proposals uh, in your packet. 
Uh, I believe a couple of the commissioners set in with the Edmonds proposal, and then a couple of commissioners set in with the Oracle Net School. Um, so based upon uh, what y'all liked, if, if uh, I know, I think the mayor, you had a question about uh, Black Mountain. Black Mountain. Mm -hmm. I am unfamiliar with Black Mountain. Uh, I was actually unfamiliar with all of these until we got our presentation. But I will say that the Oricum uh, next week seemed to be the most comprehensive financial system I've seen in a long time. Uh, not only can we track our grant management, we can track our fixed assets, we can track our depreciation, we can do anything that we need to do from a, from a cash perspective. But what, what is obvious is we have to get rid of this. This is not a financial software for a municipality or a town or any government entity. So we have to get away from that. So the question is, if, if y'all want to wait and go to Black Mountain, I think what's that? That like 26. Yeah, that's that's two years. years. Uh, this is a two-year deal. So you can go to this and based upon your feedback at the end of that two years, just simply don't renew it. And then go go to that other company. But you gotta do you gotta get away from it quickly. I say 2026. When does the school start converging though on this caps? Actually, that would have been a better question from Mr. Durham. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they're on schedule until the end of next year. Yeah. Yeah. But next year for conversion. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, my, I would approach it in the in the same way. We already set the deed, so we know what we're gonna get here. When it comes time to look at that, we have them do the same thing. We don't just want to let them convert us, and we don't know what it's gonna look like because it may not work for us. And you know, they have what what might even work. For the bridge might work for them, but it just may not work for us. Uh, so we have to consider that. We have to consider the infrastructure that you have. You don't have uh, water and sewage. You don't have police. You don't have so that their their software may be geared toward all those things. This software is geared toward what we have right now, with the ability to upgrade if we upgrade. This software can move with us as we grow, it, and we don't pay for that until we need it. Uh, that I don't know what that other looks like, but before they implement anything, you can go through that same process. And like I said, at the end of the two years, if you don't like it, you just simply don't renew it. You don't lose anything. He's a friendly. Yeah, and I, and I will also inform you that when we spoke with LGC, uh, specifically uh, a, a close Someone who's been working with us in our book, they were not overwhelmed, I'll say, with that software. Who's Black Mountain? Yeah. Okay. And that's the LGC. So uh, they, they, they were not. They, they, were not they, they were not they were not pleased. I would wow. say it that way. Okay. So and it could be because it's new and they have more kinks out. Because we don't we don't want to be that game. <laughs> we don't we don't we don't want to be the one that they work out their kinks on. No, it shouldn't be because some people are already use it. Yeah, yeah. But and it, and, and again, it depends on where they're at, right? and it could be on what they can afford. Yeah. Because if it's free, it all sounds good when it's free. Well, it's free for the first three years. Yeah. But when you think when you think about it, this is free to us because we were given the money from always being implemented. Yeah. Not like the town is paying for it. Always the end is giving us the funding to implement, and we have the ARPA funding. To not a cost to the town for these two years, but it, it's, I mean, the, the commissioners that sit in on it were overwhelmed to be supportive of it. I, like I said, I've, I've been in, in this for a while. I've not seen something so comprehensive uh, that can cover all our needs. So the Oracle is, is a $21,000 annual fee for the, for the second through the fifth year. Then you got a twelve thousand dollars annual fee for the customer support. Mm -hmm. and then you got a forty-six thousand dollars nine dollar fee for pro service.
service fee, but that's one time. Mm -hmm. And then you got 30000 for implementation fee, one time. No, no figures on that. Our annual license is going to be 21000 and we have a one time setup fee for 30000 And then after that, it will be annual at 21000 So, what is it? The 12000 for the annual customer support? That's an optional. So, we're going to need support, right? Well, that, all that's included in the startup. So, we get that included. If we decided to go to see the way I the way I look at things is while we're implementing that, we have our people on the ground walking through them when they implement. And then our people just train our people. So we don't need them to come back. If our people are there and they know what we pay them to do, after we implement it, we should know how to run. So we don't need to pay them to come back. If we need to pay them to come back, we'll lose people we got. What is the what is the pro service fee of forty six nine? I don't know what you're, which, which page you're looking at. That is Oracle 46,000. Are you looking on the net, on the net page? It doesn't have a page number on it. I think it's the net suit investment summary. It's the summary from Orca. Um, okay, you're, you're looking at it before the discount. You're looking at the 46.9 before the discount. That 30k is the discount yeah. price. So you, yeah. when they, you know, when they do the bid, of course they show you what it, what they say it will cost, it should cost you, and then they show you what our discount is. They have it, they lifted out what it would normally cost, and uh -huh. then they lifted out because we have they also gave us what we what is considered because their fiscal year ends at the end of August. Uh -huh. They gave us a fiscal year discount because they want to wrap it up as soon as possible. They would like to wrap this up before their fiscal year closes. Uh, so when they're short, they can make up some money to do that. They gave us a huge discount. So Actually, it would be like 72000 for the software, and we can get it for fifty. So that's a $27,000 savings. <laughs> Board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. I motion to use for Orca. Second. The problem is second. We try to write with Oracle for our software services. Financial software services on the question. Any questions? Yes.
Secretary will clean up. Yeah, so on the cemetery coming up, we just we are asking that the board would select a date that all the board members should be present uh, at the cemetery cleanup. Uh, we would prefer to do it in September, I believe. Uh, and we like that to come out and support it. <laughs> Mr. Brown's out there all the time cutting in with <laughs> It won't be hard for her. And I think uh, Mr. Staten offered to uh, do the cooking, if I'm not, if I'm correct. So he's probably safer behind yeah. the grill than yeah. uh, we did. I said he want to work for a cook. So we let him cook. <laughs> but if y'all if y'all can come up with a date with yourself, you don't have to decide tonight. If y'all can just come up with a date and y'all give us, it's a Saturday, so basically. Whichever Saturday works for y'all. Y'all let us know. Y'all can shoot us an email. Uh, and then whatever dates we get on that Saturday that all line up with all y'all, we will set that date and get back to you. Okay, set up two dates because both both would have to come out and assist and also do the photo education at the same time. So they set it the 14th and the 28th. We're not going to do both of them both days. You did so you give them two options. <laughs> uh, I think the 28th is probably the I think the 28th is probably a better. Better? Yeah. Okay. I think I'm, and I won't be here. I won't have y'all there. I'm on vacation. What, what week? The 14th. Oh, okay. But. What we could do is possibly do the cleanup at the cemetery and then maybe do the, the luncheon here to do the voter, all that right here on, on the block. You don't want to do the 21st one, that's the legal ag classic. Oh, we can do it that day. I mean, no, it's also <laughs> this this day. We, we can do it that day. Yeah, that's my fastest perfect day. Before they do it, everyone. Which time for you? Uh, I think we will do what I think we did what nine to twelve for the for the cleanup. Nine to two. Yes, that's what you said. Yeah. I think nine to twelve and then they'll come here from one to two. That way we'll give them time if they want to drop their stuff, their equipment and all that back off. So we can we get this information out to the citizen resident, not do it by way of this uh, all the folks. Absolutely. We will have flyers. We will post flyers. We will have public works put flyers out. Uh, we'll get the word out. So we are looking at uh, how many weeks from now? Two, three weeks from now? Four. 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 Yeah. So we want to do it what? Two weeks prior? Oh, we'll start doing it now. We'll just start. Okay. We'll just start plugging them out. We'll have a flyer done this week, and we'll just start putting them out. And and when you guys, um, Mr. Jackson, put them out. My, my field. Um, we have known that we just take papers and we stick them in doors. That's not good. They need to have some scotch tape okay. and put them on the door that they think that a citizen actually does. Okay. I used to serve a lot of papers. I used to dance with them. I was sad. And uh, during that time, I started out, I was, I was putting paper in the door, come back and laying on the ground. So I got smart about it and started using Scott tape. Then if I went by that again and the paper wasn't removed, I know there was no one that had resonated. Okay. We'll make sure we do it. I think so. Uh, the attorney did send out a report today around 4 o'clock, but it did not address the most on the Google or it addressed a lot of other issues. Uh, if y'all get a chance to read through it and respond. Can you do a follow up on that? What is that? I was saying there because this right here been on the table for at least six months. And you remember Mr. King, Attorney King was here. And Attorney King, as far as that communicated this information, 
to Ms. Attorney uh, Elwood. Mr. Elwood promised us the last three months that he would uh, just go ahead and say. Next item is old business and planning board. He did send us some information on the planning board. Appointment of a new planning board pursuant to your instructions to me from July meeting. I prepared a resolution for you to abolish the current planning board and to reestablish a new planning board. Uh, I have also prepared a second resolution for the town board to name the appointment of three town residents to the new planning board. The resolutions also instruct the town manager to request the Edgecombe County Commissioners to appoint the two new members of the extraterritorial jurisdiction. The new planning board would need to meet soon after September 1st, 2024, and organize itself by electing a chair and adopting any procedures it wants to follow, instruct, including any procedures to abolish the planning board to follow. We need to go back on that. That's not right. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Yeah. I mean, this, that's not what LDC on this. Your specifications as to the selection of a planning board and then the county, um, their part, the, the role that they play in it um, to um, get someone from the ETJ. So this is probably something else that we need to take it into a closed session and talk about. I mean, we can let the citizens that have been, you know, the names were up that were selected. Because what LTC has told us that instead of having um, three inner cities, we could have three within the city limits and we could have an alternate. Or if we read our planning book, we can have as many as we want. I know we have a small municipality here, but at the same time. And then with the ETJ, if we can't get anyone from the ETJ, we can still select from the inside. And the county says that they do not select for us. We submit to them. Ms. Carter, do you remember? Yeah. May I ask a question? May I? Just want to do this. Let us finish it. The resolution also instructs the town manager to request the Edgecombe County Commission to appoint two board members. Uh, normally, we do recommend and they appoint. They appoint, that's right, we recommend, and that's what we did before when they were kicked out. We were tossed back, and we did we did it properly as LGC instructed us to do. So, we're right back at a starting point again, so I don't know what Mr. Edwards is speaking on. I think he'd be a loss because that is not what we were told. Let me read the resolution again. Um, I said, go on, read it. Resolution of the Town Board of the Town of Princeville amending the text of the zoning ordinance. Whereas the Town Board of the Town of Princeville desires to abolish the Town's current planning board, and where the Town Board of the Town of Princeville desires to establish an entirely new planning board, and whereas in order to abolish the current planning board and to establish an entirely new planning board, the Town Board of the Town of Princeville adopts this resolution to amend 150.096A and 150.096C and to add 150.096C1. Now therefore be it resolved by the Town Board of the Town of Princeville whereby abolishes the Town's current planning board as of midnight August 31st, 2024. Be it further resolved that any appointments of members to the Town's planning board by the Town Board of Princeville and for Edgecombe County Commissioners, as of the adoption of this resolution, are hereby declared to be of no further effect as of midnight of August 31st, 2024. Be it further resolved that 150.096A of the ordinance of the town of Princeville is amended as follows. 
creation. On September 1st, 2024, there shall be and is hereby created a new planning board consisting of five members, including three residents of the town and two residents of the extraterritorial jurisdiction area. The planning board shall also act as the board of adjustments in evidentiary hearings or quasi judicial decisions. Be it further resolved that 150.096C of the ordinance of the town of Princeville is amended as follows. All members of the board shall have voting power on all matters of business. The town residents members of the board shall be appointed by the board of commissioners. Residents of the extraterritorial jurisdiction shall be appointed by the county commissioners. Further be, be it further resolved that 150.096C1 is hereby added to the ordinance of the town of Princeville. C1, the members of the planning board established on September 1st, 2024, shall have initial terms of office as follows. One town residence appointed by for a term ending June 2025. One town resident appointed for a term ending June 2026. One resident of the extraterritorial jurisdiction for a term ending June 2026. One town resident appointed for a term ending June 27. One resident of extraterritorial jurisdiction for a term ending June 2027. At completion of the initial term of office, each for each member, all additional appointments to vacancies of the planning board shall established on September 1st, 2024, shall be for three year term. Then the second resolution a resolution of the town board for the town of Princeville appointed members of the new planning board. Where the town board of the town of Princeville has abolished the town's current planning board, and whereas the town board of the town of Princeville, in a separate resolution, established a new planning board on September 1st, 2024, and whereas the town board now desires to appoint members of the new planning board established on September 1st, 2024, now therefore be it resolved the town board of Princeville hereby appoints the following town residents to the new planning board established on September 1st, 2024. They have one person. This person is appointed for a term ending June 30th, 2025. Number two, this person is appointed for a term ending June 30th, 2026. Number three, this person is appointed for a term ending June 30th, 2027. And those are the two resolutions from the train. So, for the sake of this, we, we would like to call out the names of the individuals that we have selected for the planning board and then let's take a look because I'm not in agreement so let me ask there um, from, um, from what I learned from local government. Okay, you make a motion? I motion that this be tabled until the next meeting. I second. I second it to be to the resolution. Probably we moved and second that we table the planning board until we get part of the resolution. Not a question. All the things you vote sign aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Aye. Thank you so much. Okay. Yes. Yes. When did y'all change from the original, each board member had a representation and a council to when did y'all change that? This board decided to change it. Who's the board? Y'all. We decided to change what? Y'all this panel did what they think. Oh yes. That's what they had. It was never really official, Miss Perkins. Um the from what we when talking to the people that were appointed to the to the planning board. What they told some of the commissioners that they were event planners. So we tried to get some clarification. Do you know the difference in an event planner and the planning board? So all we heard was, well, we're on the parade committee. And finally, it came around to um, later, we're just now hearing that some things that some were appointed, names were submitted to the county. And we weren't aware a name was submitted to the county. And as I go back and I read the minutes, this is how we're finding out that we didn't really, no one was really sworn in, so we did not have an official planning board. 
So this is why we requested to start all over. Okay, the next item on the agenda is new business, telephone system, bond communication. I'm sorry, is your telephone system? Yes, sir. Uh, so as the board uh, instructed us to start finding fund funding for some of these projects, we started looking at some of the existing systems that we have. One existing system is the telephone system. And what we found out is that that phone system is extremely outdated. Uh, we were actually paying for lines that did nothing for the town. We're not even using those town, those lines. So what we did is we brought in a contractor to come and give us a uh, rundown on how they could save us costs. Uh, long story short, we're currently paying about eight fifty a month, I think, for phone services. This proposal will cut that in half. We will pay uh, roughly four hundred dollars a month. Uh, so this system, even though we have a one-time cost of about seven thousand in the year, we will recoup that, and it will almost pay for itself. In two years, the fund, the savings that the town will incur, will be uh, great. Roughly about five thousand dollars a year, the town will have coming back into the budget. Mm -hmm. They'll have an updated phone system. They'll have uh, updated phones. It will work from here to the senior center. It will all be interactive, and so it will be a much smoother system. So the internet is the internet included. Yes, in that yes, ma'am. Okay. And it's the high optic internet. So okay. it's, we're really getting an upgrade for us. I did a little research on it. Pretty much everybody gave a five star rating. Yes, sir. Bond Communications has been an employee, has been a contractor with the state of North Carolina probably for about 20, 25 years, and they're really exceptional. Let me let me ask you a question. Did we do our home work on the the um, internet on the providers that we already had? And the reason why I'm saying that is because I knew that we had signed off on a contract. Are we at the ending point of that contract or yeah. we can pay or we got to pay some No, we're at the end. We can pay them a monthly fee, which is another reason why it's so high. Yes, we don't have to But they, they can't even compete with what uh, fund is offering. Do we need to get two additional bids or not? No, I think because it's under 10,000, we're good. Okay. Does it operate the elevator as well? No. Does not? It will tie into the elevator. Because the phone will have to tie into the elevator, mm -hmm. but it won't operate the elevator. It will do just what it does now. Okay, that's, yeah. that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, operate security and camera and YouTube and Zoom and all that. Everything. Let's play the board. Questions, comments? Okay. I make a motion that we. You ready for it? Mm -hmm. I make a motion that we accept. Second. The proper moving second that we have accept bonds communication proposal. Any questions? All in favor use the vote sign high. Opposed nay. Ayes have it. Thank you so much. Board comments. So when we Bones has invited everybody to their grand opening on the 27th at 11 a.m. Big Bones has invited everyone to come to their grand opening on the 27th at 11 o'clock a.m. We would love to see the entire world on the 27th at 11 o'clock a.m. Are we going to have a Christmas parade? It is August, almost September. I think one other piece is we're going to have to see if we can get some uh, dedicated, committed, uh, com some commitment members to help out. I know I spoke with Ms. Minnie Baines over there in Southern Jerry. She stated that she would be glad to be a part of help organizing the Christmas parade so we can 
reach out to maybe some of the other ones that we had. Um, I think that we can go back and piggyback on what we did last year. Um, I think this this election you were familiar with that number. Can you hear me? That was Miss Tate. That's right. Miss Tate, are you familiar? Let me recommend that we have a special events committee for all the activities that we have going on in the town of Princeville. You know, we, we did a whole thing last year. Are we going to do that again this year? We did. We talked about having a veterans appreciation celebration. We talked about the need of a historical society. We're going to focus in on historical tourism. Uh, and we need somebody with some historical background. Thinking of the young lady that teaches at Community College. Uh, what's her name? One thing at a time. This is one thing, right. at, this, this is one thing at a time. I'm talking about a special event to me. Yeah. Um, so we can all think about one person that we would like to participate in the special events committee. So they can start planning these events. And let us know what we're going to do and what we're not going to do. So maybe um, next month we come out with uh, at least one name from each ward or uh, how many people that we're looking at. Five. At least five. At least five from one from each commissioner. Yeah, mine's already. Because yeah. we gotta, you know, start putting stuff out here in place so it can um, be a ongoing event for the town as we have did in the past. Okay. Anything else from the board? Okay, we've got a motion to go into executive session, NCGS 143-318.11816 to prevent the disclosure of information that is privileged or confidential pursuant to the law of this state or of the United States or not considered a public record within the meaning of Chapter 132 of the Penal Statute. Personnel, NCGS 143-318.1184 to discuss related to the location or expansion of industries agreement on a tentative list of economic development incentives that may be offered by the public body in negotiation or to discuss matters related to military and selection approach or real life economic development. Is there a motion? So we move. So the problem moving second that we go into executive session. All the questions. All in favor do go to say aye. Opposed nay. Aye. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.